as far as when you're taking income, like what do you do with the dividends? Do you have them still reinvested into PUAs just to build the cash value? The answer is yes, I'll usually do that. You can have your dividends applied toward the loan interest. The thing to be aware of with that is when dividends are applied toward loan interest, how it's counted for you is it counts as if you're taking that dividend in cash. So all that's going to do is drop your cost basis a little bit faster, meaning you have to switch from withdrawals to loan sooner, which you know won't make a huge difference when you look at the numbers. And depending on when I run that illustration and what the loan interest rate is, that option might look a little bit better than having the dividends reinvested into PUAs. But again, if I'm going to look at the guarantees and look at it more conservative, probably still gravitate toward uh, dividends purchasing PUAs. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, e- even I thought I was like, oh, it, yeah. I'm thinking from a safety standpoint. Does it this sound safer to just have my dividend growth pay the loan interest, so I don't have that mm-hmm. compounding effect? But realize when you're eventually taking those loans out of the policy, it's ch- it's charging you loan interest on a much smaller dollar amount, say the 70K or the 35K or the 48K, as opposed to earning that dividend on $700,000 in cash value, 800000 900000 It's much more effective or efficient, I would say, where the compounding on that versus the amount of time it takes for your loan interest to compound almost ends up either looking similar or, or you know, so kind of removing that stress from people because I, I'm, I'm thinking about what the average mom, dad is, is thinking like, oh my goodness, if I don't pay this loan interest, it's going to compound on me and it's going to become this huge number. And they would be right. They're like, yes, over the years, the, the number does compound and, and, it, and it gets large, but so do your cash value, the dividends on, on a guaranteed basis. If, mm-hmm. Especially if we went to a reduced paid up, you're no longer funding it, you've removed yeah. all the insurance expense from it and all you're doing is taking income. And again, to your point, it's not like we have to stick to a certain dollar amount in terms of how much we pull. Cause maybe there's a year where you, maybe you didn't travel to five different countries in at 69, right? You did it when you were 65, 66, and then it kind of slowed down. And so instead of going to five countries, you only did two this year. So you really didn't need to pull out um, as, as much money, right? And you can do it on a monthly basis, which I think also has a slight difference in the interest compounding as, as well. Like I, I think bit. there's something to be said about, okay, if I withdrew 70K in one shot, versus five thousand, six thousand dollars every single month, you know, or as needed, mm-hmm. then that makes a little bit of a difference, yeah. Over time, yeah, if you're doing that every year for a while, it, it would make a difference because loan interest is going to begin to compound on any loans you take the Daily. day you pull it out. Yeah. So right. if you do it all up front versus monthly versus sporadically, yeah, if you're deferring some money you're pulling out and you don't plan, plan on paying any of the loan interest ever, that's where it can really make sense. Wow. Okay, yeah. this, was re- this was really good. This is very new content, definitely for my audience.